So if you guys have been here for, a, that was a lot of horn. He is very, very dead, stabbed in the chest. However, oh, had a plan, past tense. <laughs> Saw something she can't, oh, no. Anthony Horowitz is a line to kill. A time to kill, a line to kill. This is the kind to kill. Not to be confused with the kind worth killing by Peter Swanson. Oh my God. Try, uh, let's just try this again. Whew. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. You know what time it is. It's time to talk new releases. So here we go, end of the year. Handful of books, I say that every month and then I always miss at least one, but one of my most anticipated books of the year is coming out and let's just talk about them. First up, I wanna talk about my new found obsession with Hannah Morrissey. So if you guys watched my part one of my November wrap up, which I happened to film this morning, <laughs> then you will know I read the Hello Transcriber, which is her first book in the Black Harbor series. So the next book takes place in Black Harbor, but it's not a sequel because it's completely different characters that are involved. So you can read The Widowmaker, which is out December 6th first, and then when you fall in love with it, you can go back and read Hello Transcriber if you haven't already. So let's talk about The Widowmaker. In this one, it says we have a wealthy family shrouded in scandal a detective tasked with solving an impossible cold case, and a woman with a dark past all collide. I love it. I love it already. So I do have an arc of this, which at the time of filming this, I haven't read yet, but hopefully at the time of the release, I will have read it yet. But I did read somebody's review. I've read multiple reviews about this, but somebody's review in particular said that they felt that the jacket copy gave too much away. So I'm not gonna read anything else for you guys about this, other than to tell you, that Black Harbor is a town in Wisconsin. It is dark. There's a lot of dark and messed up people there. There's a lot of bad things that go down there. The books are so book, because I've read the first one, which is still next to me. Super atmospheric. I heard this described as Midwest noir, which I absolutely love. You definitely get, it just feels gritty and dark characters are complicated and interesting. The first book had a bit of romance to it. I don't know if the second book will, but I just fell in love with the characters. I fell in love with Hannah Morrissey's writing. She very much reminds me of a ton of French in a way where you get these very dark cases, but there's such beautiful language describing the atmosphere, describing what's going on, not in a flowery way, flowery way, I have a hard time with that word, but in a way that is just so beautifully drawn out, words, lines, phrases, images that she manages to capture with her words. And I think it was just such a stunning achievement. So I'm very excited for this one. I do know like in book number one, one of our main characters was an aspiring writer. In this one, we have a photographer. So basically <laughs> two things that I absolutely love in the world. So I'm very excited for this. Stay tuned for a review because it's gonna be coming on the sooner side. Also on December 6th, we have The Kind to Kill by Tessa Wiegert. I've filmed this like five times, you guys. So this is the fourth book in the Shane Merchant series. I am embarrassingly behind on the series. I just read somebody's review on Instagram saying this was the best book yet in the series, which of course I'm like, of course it is. I have work to do, I have work to do. But I read A Death in the Family, which is the first book in the series and I absolutely loved it and I was gonna read the rest of them and you know, I just, I don't TBR and when I do, you can guarantee if I make a TBR, I am 100% not gonna read any of the books on it. So I'm gonna stop putting Tessa Weird on my TBR so I'll actually read her books. So because it's the fourth in a series, I'm a little hesitant to read too far ahead on the description, but Shayna was an NYPD detective. So when book number one opens, she has left the NYPD. She has moved to upstate New York with her fiance, I wanna say he was at the time. And she winds up catching a case with her partner on an island and it is a very wealthy family who owns the island and lives there. And somebody from their family was missing, but his bed was covered in blood. So Shayna and her partner go out to investigate. Weather ensues, they wind up getting trapped on the island with a killer. It was so well done. It was such a like rich people behaving badly kind of a situation, which I just loved so much. So Shayna is still a detective, it appears. And she is still working in that same place, it appears. <laughs> so 
I don't want to read, like I said, I don't want to read too far ahead. So I'm just trying to get a core of what the story is. So basically it looks like somebody goes missing at an annual festival and Shayna is on the case and she has personal and professional reasons to solve it. So we're just gonna go with that. Keep it cryptic. I think I just read something that ruined something from an earlier book, <laughs> so shame on me. I have learned nothing from my misstep in October. But anyway, I am a really big fan of Tessa Wiegert as a writer. I loved the writing of A Death in the Family. I really love Shayna as a character. I'm excited to see more of what happens to her and how her career and how her character evolves. So I definitely will be tuning into this book. I just have a little bit of catch up work to do in the interim, but no judgment. But if you guys are caught up in the series, then just know it's coming out on December 6th. Next up, I have My Darkest Prayer by S.A. Cosby. So this is actually a re-release of his debut novel. So I read Razorblade Tears this year and I loved it. Very dark, very heavy on the violence, serves the story, beautiful characters. That book both made me like cringe and cry, loved it so much. And I'm excited to read more from him. So I was super excited to see this. And the quote, which I'm guessing is like a quote from maybe the first line of the book. It just says, I handle the bodies. Whether it's working at his cousin's funeral home or tossing around the local riffraff at his favorite bar, Nathan Waymaker is a man who knows how to handle the bodies. A former Marine and Sheriff's deputy, Nathan has built a reputation in his small Southern town as a man who can help when all other avenues have been exhausted. When a beloved local minister is found dead, his parishioners ask Nathan to make sure the death isn't swept under the rug. So it says, what starts out as an easy payday descends into a maze of mayhem filled with wannabe gangsters, vicious crime lords, porn stars, crooked police officers, and a particularly treacherous preacher, a lot of words, and his mysterious wife. So I have no doubt that this is going to be dark and violent and possibly uncomfortable and absolutely amazing, and I'm very excited for it. I do also have Blacktop Wasteland, which I haven't read yet, but I really feel like he's a not to be missed author. Just really, really, again, someone who writes about really dark, uncomfortable situations in such a stunning and beautiful manner. I just think he's absolutely amazing. So big fan. Next up is The Ingenue, and this is by Rachel Kelpeck Dale. So she wrote The Ballerinas, which I have and haven't read yet. If you've been here for a minute, you know that's a thing that I do, <laughs> not on purpose. But I saw that she has a new book come out, so I was instantly intrigued. And this one says, It's My Dark Vanessa Meets the Queen's Gambit in a new novel of suspense about the bonds of family, the limits of talent, the risks of ambition, and the rewards of revenge. So I have read My Dark Vanessa. I already instantly have thoughts about what this book is going to be, and I have no doubt that it's going to be dark and disturbing and messed up. So, of course, I want to read it. So in this one, we are following a former piano prodigy named Saskia, and she returns home to Milwaukee after her mom passes away. And Saskia expects to inherit the family estate, the Elf House. But with the discovery that her mother's will bequeathed the Elf House to a man that Saskia shares a complicated history with, she's forced to re-examine her own past and the romantic relationship that changed the course of her life. And she's looking for answers. So it says, can she find a way to claim her heritage while keeping her secrets buried? Or will the fallout from digging too deep destroy her? Digging too deep destroy her. So we've got mother-daughter relationships, the expectations of talent, the stories we tell ourselves, and what happens when the things that once made you special are taken away from you. So we get dual timelines in this one as well. It definitely sounds like I'm gonna have to be in a certain place to read this book, but I'm definitely really intrigued by it. And I'm really curious. I need to read the ballerinas as well. It's up high on the shelf, but we will get there and I'll let you know. Next book I have is called The Widow, and this is by Kara Ruda. So I have heard of her books before. She wrote a book called The Next Wife, which I haven't read yet, but it's one of those books that's been on my radar. So when I saw her name, I was like, hmm, I'm putting you on my radar again. So this one says, a husband with no secrets, a wife with no limits. Yes, I'm already in. A novel of marriage, privilege, and lies. So this says, Jodi Asher had a plan. Her charismatic husband, Martin, would be a political icon. She, the charming wife and she would fuel his success. For 15 congressional terms, they were the golden couple on the hill. Life was good until he wasn't. So Martin had a secret affair with a young staffer. Doesn't bother Jody. nice to know she's forgiving. But professionally, it's a legacy killer. Soon a reporter gets word of this scandal in the making and Martin's indiscretions threaten to ruin everything Jody has accomplished. And then he dies. 
So it's a chance to change the narrative, but the reporter won't let go of the lead. As the balance of power shifts in the Asher house and on the hill, it's time for Jody to take control, and there's nothing the ruthless widow won't do to secure the future she's entitled to, even if she has a secret of her own. So, political scandal. I love the fact that there's a scandal that's like Loki starting to break and then he dies and she's like, we're gonna change this narrative for my own benefit. So, Jody sounds like a very interesting character and I'm here for it. I'm definitely here for kind of this, I don't know, I don't even, I don't even wanna say she's malicious because I don't know anything about her and I don't know anything about this book, but I kind of love her resistance <laughs> to giving in <laughs> or dogged determinedness to change the story. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens. The next book I have, I was actually lucky enough to get an arc of from Minotaur, and this is A Death in Tokyo, and this is by Kigo Higashino. So this is actually the third book in a series, but I have read that you could dive in in book number three. So I feel like there's a newer trend of creating series standalones where you can dive into books at different parts of a series and be completely fine versus I feel like back in the day if you missed out on the earlier books you would kind of be lost. So I probably am going to do like a Steve Cavanaugh situation where I read 13 first even though it was book four in the series which in all fairness I didn't know at the time but maybe just start here. So this book series follows a detective Kaga and the Tokyo police and it says he's faced with a very public murder that doesn't quite add up, a prime suspect unable to defend himself and pressure from the highest levels for a quick solution. So there is a man who drags himself to this near Hiroboshi bridge. I'm probably saying that wrong. The police think he's drunk because he's like staggering along and collapses. And then when the police go to rouse him, they actually see he has a fatal stab wound to the chest, but obviously was not killed on the bridge. So why did he drag himself to the bridge? What is happening here? And then we've got some other stuff happening at the same time. We've got people trying to escape the police. We have a hit and run. There's a whole bunch happening here. So it says, a mind-bending mystery from the modern master of classic crime. I'm very intrigued. I posted this on my Instagram when I got it and a bunch of people responded and said that they like love his books and were super excited to see it. So I'll admit he is a new to me author. I don't know anything about his past books. He has won the Edgar Award for best novel and he is just a best-selling author in Japan and all around Asia. So I'm excited. I love somebody new. You guys know I love discovering new authors and I'm super excited to have it. So thank you again to Minotaur for sending it to me. Stay tuned for when I read it. The next book I have is The Last Invitation by Darby Kane. So I have not read her yet, which doesn't mean I don't own one of her books because I a thousand percent do, but I'm very intrigued by her. So she's on the list. So this one is gripping twisty suspense. So this one says it's about an invitation to an exclusive club that comes with deadly consequences. Yep, thank you very much, I'm here. They meet the second Tuesday of every month and vote, and then somebody dies. What? Over the last few years, prominent people, a retired diplomat, beloved basketball coach, and a CEO of an empire have died in a series of fluke accidents and shocking suicides. There's no apparent connection, no signs of foul play. Behind it all is a powerful group of women, the Sophie Foundation, who meet over wine and cheese to review files of men who behave very, very badly, and then they met out the justice. So I'll be honest, you guys, I read nothing about this book, as you can probably tell before I put it on the list. I just saw her name and I was like, yes, she's somebody I want to read. And wow, this sounds really good. I am, I love a revenge story. I really, really love a revenge story. And this is giving me completely different, but like a little bit of a twinkle of They Never Learn, which is the female serial killer book by Lane Fargo about the professor who gets rid of the worst men possible on campus. So in this one, we have Jessa Hall jumped at the mysterious elusive invitation to the secret club. The invite comes when she's at her lowest, of course, and aching to take back control. After years of fighting and scratching to get ahead, she's ready for a chance to make the bad guys lose. And Jessa soon realizes though, just how far she's willing to go and how dangerous this game has become. So yeah, she's gonna get sucked into this revenge club and I, I'm guessing things are not going to end well for anybody involved. So, of course, <laughs> you know, I want to read it. I really, really love these revenge stories very much. So I'm excited. And again, I haven't read anything by her, but I've heard great things about Darby Kane. So let me know if anybody's read any of her books before or has read this one yet. So I am very excited. 
And the last book is Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. This is book number five in the Truly Devious series. So if you guys have been here for a minute, you know I'm a big fan of the Truly Devious series. And I've talked about this many times. The book was conceived as a trilogy. And then obviously it was amazing and people loved it and people wanted more. So she wrote a fourth book and now we're back with book number five. Duh. <laughs> so book number five we are senior year at Ellingham Academy we are following Stevie and her friends who we met in book number one and we are getting taken away in this one to London so I feel like I don't want to give too much away but I also feel like maybe you guys already know some of this stuff but anyway long story short the first three books take place at Ellingham Academy so we have one mystery that transcends all three with little mysteries in between that get solved. Book number four took us to a summer camp where Stevie was a counselor and now we are going to London which I'm super excited about. So somebody in her friend group is studying abroad, they go there for winter break and of course there's a case to deal with. So in this one we have a cold case from 1995 that happened at Cambridge and it was a double murder. So nine friends from Cambridge University went to a country house and played a drunken game of hide and seek. And then the next morning, two of them were found in a woodshed murdered with an ax. So not an accident, but it was ruled a burglary. And one of the remaining seven saw something that they can't explain. So you know Stevie is gonna be all over this. So it wasn't a break-in, somebody's lying about what happened. It says seven suspects, two murders, one killer still playing a deadly game. So I very much enjoy these books. I think Stevie is a dynamite character. I think there is so much complexity to her. I think she's so well drawn. I love all of the winks and nods to cold cases, to Agatha Christie, to her obsession with true crime. And I just thought these books were just really clever and super entertaining. So I'll a thousand percent be reading this one. So that's gonna do it. Hopefully a little bit short and sweet for December. And I have already started looking ahead, of course, to what's coming out next year. I can't even, you guys, there are so many amazing books coming out. I need to figure out how I wanna film these videos next year. So if you've made it this far, just a quick question for the group. Is it helpful to do these monthly ones? Would you rather do them quarterly? Do you like them at all? I'm trying to post also on Instagram with things, but I just, I'm always doing the research regardless. So whether or not I make a video about it will not change the fact that I'm looking what's coming out, but I'm just curious if you guys find these books helpful, these books, these videos helpful or interesting. Let me know, I won't be offended either way. So let me know down below. And then, yeah, we'll see which ones I'm gonna pick up. So maybe something to add to your holiday wish list, maybe something to get after the holidays, if hopefully some of us will get some gift cards <laughs> as gifts this year. It's just kind of what I'm hoping for. But anyway, we'll see what happens. So I hope you guys are doing great. Let me know which books I missed that are coming out in December because I know I did, I always do. And I will see you in another video soon. So take care you guys and thanks for watching as always and I'll see you when I see you, bye.